Hi everyone. I came across a psalm today that I thought was appropriate for where we're at at this, this point in time with our lockdowns or our social distancing. I'm sure a lot of us have questions. A lot of us have been feeling like we're walking on some new and unsteady ground. Uh, I just wanted to read this psalm. It's a psalm of David, and it's entitled in my Bible, Save Me, O God. So let me just read through some of these verses and share with you. Psalm 69, starting at verse 1. Save me, O God, for the waters have come up to my neck. I sink in deep mire where there is no foothold. I've come into deep waters, and the flood sweeps over me. I am weary with crying out. My throat is parched. My eyes grow dim with waiting for my God. And as I read that, I felt, wow, that is probably how a lot of people are feeling today. And it's, it's totally human. And it's really a good idea to admit it and admit it to God because he's the one we need to cry out to. And though we might be getting impatient, we can rest in his love today and rest in his goodness and knowing that he is a good God and a good father. So I'm going to read on and skip down to verse 13. And it says here, but as for me, my prayer is to you, O Lord. At an acceptable time, O God, in the abundance of your steadfast love, answer me in your saving faithfulness. And that's what we have to do. We have to remind ourselves when we start feeling like we're going to be overwhelmed by a flood uh, or sinking into this deep mire of despair. We have to remind ourselves that we serve a good, good God and he has us in the palm of his hands. Then David goes on to say, deliver me from the sinking in this mire. Let me de be delivered from my enemies and from the deep waters. Let not the flood sweep over me or the deep swallow me up or the pit close in over me. Answer me, O Lord, for your steadfast love is good. According to your abundant mercy, turn to me. See, David understood that God, even in the midst of of some of his biggest trials. He knew God was merciful. And even if David messed up and got himself into trouble, he still depended on the mercy of God. And he went before God, knowing the goodness of his father. Let me read on. Verse 17. Hide not your face from your servant, for I am in distress. Make haste to answer me. Draw near to my soul. Redeem me. Ransom me because of my enemies. And today, you know, we have this enemy called coronavirus, but there's also a very deadly enemy out there today and it's called fear. And we need to cry out to God every time that thing called fear comes knocking at our heart's door. And we need to cry out to God and say, God, the fear is here, but my God is a merciful God. And Lord God, I trust you today. And as you speak about the goodness of God and if you cry out to him and you magnify his name in the midst of that fear that is threatening to overpower you, as you do that, you're going to find that fear is going to be pushed back inch by inch. And if you persist in elevating the name of the God, of our God, Lord Most High, and Jesus Christ, the Almighty One, you're going to find that that fear will eventually flee from your soul. So every time it comes knocking at your door, you push back, you knock back with words of truth. Finally, in verses 29, David says, but I am afflicted and in pain. And I know there are so many out there afflicted and even in physical pain, but I also know about the emotional pain we must be going through. Those of us who are separated from loved ones, and I myself even have a cousin who is in physical pain from this virus right now. It's, it's, it's for real. But let's just continue, continue to cry out to God and trust in his mercy and his goodness. So when, we're, when David said, I'm afflicted and in pain, he continued to say, let your salvation, O God, 
set me on high. Father God, I just pray today that your salvation would set us on high, set us in places above the pain, above the fear and above the worry and above the distress and above the bad reports. Father God, I just pray that your salvation, which is a sure salvation, would set us above all these things. And may we be embraced today. And may you embrace my friends today in your love, your steadfast love that surrounds us like a shield. And finally, we see a secret here that David gives us. And he says in verse 30, I will praise the name of God with a song. I will magnify him with thanksgiving. This will please the Lord more than an ox or a bull with horns and hoofs. When the humble see it, they will be glad. You who seek God, let your hearts revive. He's telling us it's time to seek the Lord. Let's magnify him. Magnify him. God takes pleasure in our praises. He takes pleasure in his people. He's not asking us to go out there and work our hands to the bone to sacrifice and sacrifice. He wants our hearts. He wants our hearts to trust in him and to trust in his love. So let's magnify him today for that love. Verse 33 says, For the Lord hears the needy and does not despise his own people who are prisoners. If you feel like a prisoner today, know that. Take that word into heart. God does not despise you. He does not think nothing of you. Oh, no, no, no. His thoughts are on you. There's no place you can go to hide from him. So let heaven and earth praise him and the seas and everything that moves in them. For God will save Zion and build up the cities of Judah and the people shall dwell there and possess it. And the offspring of his servants shall inherit it. And those who love his name shall dwell in it. So today, I just wanted to encourage all of you these feelings of distress are real, but God has not left us as orphans. We can overcome. We can be lifted in high places. Let's follow the example of David today. Even though he felt that distress intensely, he still said, I will magnify the Lord. So be encouraged. Get up today. Rise up and in Invite even your friends and your family to magnify the Lord in the midst of this storm because his love surrounds us all like a shield. God bless you all.